without introducing yourself. Oh, yes. Well, uh, my name is uh, Per Ulf Wikström. I am living in Stockholm, Sweden. And uh, in reality, I am born up there in the most Nordic part of Sweden. But uh, we moved down south. And I got my education uh, in Malmö, the most southern part of it, just across Copenhagen, as you might know. And I, my schooling there was uh, the normal. We were Latin American, so we studied language, Latin, and then I took my exams down there. And um, also in uh, Lund, the University of Lund, that's the most southern university there, and the dental school also there. And when I moved off to Stockholm as married, I was interested in hypnosis, most because of uh, I have always been interested in new things in the medical area. And dentistry was, in old days, a little bit more of uh, working with the hands and having them to accept the, what was needed and having to open their mouths if possible and so on. But uh, then it went very quickly with uh, hypnosis because of uh, one of my friends uh, who were in England and studied hypnosis and went back and he was my, so to say, first mentor. But then uh, when it was in uh, 72, 70, I think he, I more frequently used hypnosis with my patients. And uh, when the Swedish society got uh, to have the <coughs> ISH Congress, I think it was the 6th in 73 in Lund, uh, it happened to me that I become the secretary for the Congress committee. And uh, because of the secretary, he went s sick, so I had to jump in very quickly, rather an experience, so to say, and also in the program making. And then it went very quickly because of, uh, uh, I remember it, as a curiosity, when I organized um, uh, the program, there should be a program on uh, hypnotic techniques. And Erika Fromm was there, and um, uh, a friend of mine from England. Uh, now I have a memory, like I'm 79, but they were four of us. I can give you the names later on. And uh, Kay, uh, uh, yeah, she was one of those also. And then the one who should have been the fourth, he could not stand up for it. And then I proposed an American, uh, another friend of mine. And then the Kay and uh, fr uh, also from, she said, no, no more Americans. We, it's enough of Americans here. You must take that job, and she pointed upon me, and I felt uh, fear in my heart, sitting by those great persons and have to uh, speak about uh, hypnotic techniques. And Kay Thompson, who was uh, also the introducer for the program there, when she presented Per Ola from Sweden, he has chosen to speak about uh, time distortion and he has 10 minutes to speak about time distortion. And I think he must, you need a lot of time distortion just to expand that time more in 10 minutes. So I did it with fear in my heart, but I succeeded. And then afterwards, when uh, I walked through the park and Bob Pearson and, and Kay sat there, and Kay at that time, she was president of the American Society of Clinical Hypnosis. Uh, I asked Kay, could I be a member of your society? Of course, she said. <laughs> and then was the start of my connections with America. Do you remember when you were very first introduced to what hypnosis was? Oh, it was uh, seeing that 
friend of mine, which he came back from England and he was um, doing hypnosis on patients and it was so effective. And then it rushed, as I said before, very quickly. In it. What is your own uh, understanding or definition of hypnosis? Well, <sighs> hypnosis is a very normal state of being. Uh, I often is in hypnosis myself without knowing it, I think. I am very interested in art and music and, and my world is filled with uh, experiences I don't know. All the time if it, I am alert, as people say, or if I am in trance with something very interesting. So. That's my opinion. Do you have a... Uh, can't be now like that. <laughs> Do you have a favorite story about hypnosis that you could share with us? Well, this was a very interesting story, as I told you, the first one. But an event which impressed me very much was when I went to Beirut in uh, Lebanon uh, in 73. I was invited of the dental society to speak about dentistry and hypnosis there. And uh, at the university there was a hospital also, an American hospital. And I was invited to demonstrate hypnosis, how to cope, cope with the fear of patients and then I was brought into the room where extractions were made. Normally you have one patient sitting in, a, in, a, in the dental room, but it was a room and there were four chairs and four people sitting in a circle waiting for instructions to be made. And normally I think they went from the one to the second and so on. So it was a, a room filled with fear and then they had me to demonstrate how to relax on the first patient that the other looked upon that and I can understand that was a very uh, difficult situation an abnormal situation uh, well I think I had some uh, some um, uh, value of it also because of as you know uh, if there is a woman in a Muslim world, she's not alone. There must be some from the family also besides, and there's a doctor. He makes the extractions of the tooth, and so the atmosphere is so quite different than what is normal in, in our world, so to say. It was an uh, interesting experience indeed. Do you have any uh, predictions for the future of hypnosis? Predictions or what will hypnosis be like in the future? Well, now in these days, I just listened to um, uh, uh, interesting uh, works this morning, how we more and more we know about uh, um, to explain what happens in the brain pharmacologically. So, um, so much of, of the research in the incoming uh, years will explain that hypnosis is a very normal uh, way of uh, avoiding pharmacological uh, treatments and uh, rely and trust the body's own possibilities to, to cure and, and work. Do you have a favorite case you can tell me about over the last 30 years? <laughs> what if, do you mean? With Let, let's speak about the uh, mentors before, because of my mentors have meant very much to me. Kay Thompson, she's a guy and for me, and I was invited after uh, the first meeting to go come to America, and I was intended many of her workshops, and then I also stayed for a while and I was assistant uh, when she had workshops 
And at that time, uh, I began to be called PO over the world. And that's a funny story also because of I, my intention were to learn how to speak English the American way. And um, I spoke then uh, extremely Oxford English, so to say. And I had also problems, of course, to un understand when we were in Minnesota, in Texas, and so on, what they asked me about. And then uh, the first way to um, uh, apply to it was uh, when I got some interesting question, but did not understand. I had to uh, reply back, that's very interesting, but I think Kay could communicate better on that type. So I slipped away from, from the problem and took it over instead. And then afterwards, when I have said to her, please call me Perublov, and you must do it by taking the kissing attitude, Perublov, then you can do it better. She slipped away and, no, she said, I call you P.O. And after that, I am P.O. And another thing, which is a little bit funny, she said, I have promised you to correct your American English or whatsoever because of you hate to use the wrong words for it. But from now on, I would not more do it. Why? When people are a little bit, have a little smile where you say something which is uh, earnest and uh, you wonder why, but in fact often you say so uh, many, um, uh, I would say sometimes very um, hmm, not, not proper misunderstandings, not knowing that you uh, say double meanings but they are so funny, so I would not take, be away from it, so I would not any longer correct you. So after that, uh, oh, could not have done it, and uh, you mustn't have this on if you don't like to it. Uh, I had a case, um, a woman who then experienced herself back to the 16th century, and she was a man then and rode on a horse on uh, the highlands or Wales. And I found it very interesting. I think that I must uh, expose, go on further and further. But when she was brought back to a normal state, she fell into a cry, and she cried in three, four days more intensively. And the husband was so raged on it, and I felt maybe it will be destroy my whole career. I have done too much of it. So this entering uh, beyond my limitation and my knowledge is so dangerous. So one should keep to what is the limits of what we can do, not try to be a kind of a psychotherapist of that sort.